Hello, it is Tuesday, August 9th, and we are looking ahead to this coming Sunday's gospel reading, in particular, uh, Luke chapter 12, beginning with verse 49, 49 through 56. Worship this Sunday, we will be worshiping at 8.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. Uh, 8.30 worship is our indoors traditional worship that's also live streamed. And of course, our 10 a.m. weather permitting, we will be outside with the worship band. And so this is our scripture reading for this coming Sunday, and I will read it to you now. Uh, the very first verse, verse 49, it talks about Jesus coming to cast fire upon the earth. And as you hear that, and as you think about that and what he says after this, this is not one of those feel-good scriptures. On the contrary, it's designed to perhaps both describe but also provoke. At any rate, when you think about fire, think about not necessarily the destructive nature that fire can offer, but it's more of a refiner's fire. And so think about um, you know, when metal or uh, another object is placed into the fire for a finish and for making it better. I've also been thinking about if any of you are uh, fans of the Blown Away series on glass blowing on Netflix, another way in which fire, the power of fire is used to create something beautiful and to make beauty in, you know, out of the ashes. We've heard that kind of saying before as well. So think about that, a refiner's fire or fire used to transform and change and to improve and to beautify. Okay, Luke chapter 12. Jesus says, I came to cast fire upon the earth. How I wish that it was already ablaze. I have a baptism I must experience. How I am distressed until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, I have come instead to bring division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. Father will square off against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, and mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Jesus also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud forming in the west, you immediately say it's going to rain. And indeed it does. And when a south wind blows, you say a heat wave is coming. And it does. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret conditions on earth and in the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret the present time? This is the good news. The gospel of our Lord, and perhaps it doesn't sound like good news to you. And that is true. We often want our faith, um, church, worship to help us feel good, to give us comfort, to provide some security and assurance. And we love to be reminded of the promises of Jesus and, and all of the good stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there is a place and a time and situations for that is where that is very, very appropriate. But that is not the only role that Jesus has in our lives. That is not the only thing that God desires for us. And in this case, this is not a feel-good passage. It is, though, a passage in which Jesus is speaking about a truth that we need to hear and that can result in, just like a fine refiner's fire, a better end product. In our case, a better people, a better community, a better world. Jesus is not so much talking about bringing division when you hear these kinds of words from him. What he's really doing is describing the reality, helping us to understand that this is already the way in which our world is at work. We are divided. We are divisive. And so he is describing a reality so much as saying, this is what I want to bring to you. At the same time, he understands it like a refiner's fire or by like a baptism by the Spirit. That that kind of work, work that at first looks like division and conflict, can also result in deep transformation and a deep life-changing peace for all of us, almost like Debbie Thomas um, 
these are I, I'm using uh, one of her commentaries to provide insight into this passage and she talks about it as a disinfecting piece and I like thinking it about that way you have to scrub it out you have to clean it out you have to upset what is the status quo and help people to see uh, what the realities are that we like to keep hidden the realities that we would prefer not to name um, expose the lies the injustices all those things that we like to pretend aren't really there and it can mean difficulty it will mean difficulty and conflict and even in cases pain and suffering and those kinds of things but ultimately a follow-through of understanding what that division leads to is it leads to a deep and abiding peace which we know Jesus preaches regularly as well a deep and abiding peace in which he says to us you don't need to be afraid I am with you I am caring for you I am loving you and I will care for you always and so we get led into and through the fire into a baptism we are reminded we are baptized into the death of Jesus in order to arise again with him to new life we must go through these times and these periods as individuals as families as communities as a world I think times of deep difficulty and move through that refining fire in order to move into a better reality into a new reality into a transformative time the question for you then to ponder is where are you in that in your own personal life and where is where would you say our community is I think that's a good question to ask as well so much of this is both individual but also communal what do we as a community of faith need to understand wrestle with uh, have a conflict about um, move in and through in order to be transformed in order to grow deeper in our faith in order to become more spiritual all those good things and so I invite you to think about that to wrestle with these hard words of Jesus to uh, not to turn the page until you find those nice comforting words again but to consider what these types of words and this particular passage and others like it mean for you and for us together in our life of faith Thanks for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you soon.